In this video, I'll be running through the major movement of the upper and lower limb. Now I'll be demonstrating them using this guy, but I'd recommend if you're watching this, you try them out yourself. If you can relate the anatomy we're teaching you to your own body, it's a fantastic way to help you remember it. So the movement for the body, they come in pairs. If we move a joint in one direction, we have to move it back in the other direction. And the first pair that I'd like to look at are flexion and extension. Now flexion generally means uh, sort of bending of the body, pulling everything in from the anatomical position. So in most joints of the body, flexion brings the distal portion of the joint anteriorly. And we can see that at the shoulder, at the elbow, and the wrist, and also at the hip joint. However, we do have an exception. That when we get down to the knee and ankle, flexion brings them in the opposite direction. Now, the way that I remember this is, I imagine if someone's jumping into a swimming pool, they're doing a cannonball, they've got everything tucked in, but their feet are hanging down, then all of those major joints are in flexion. Extension is the opposite. For now, these joints are generally straightening out, they're being pulled back, so the shoulder will come back to here, the elbow straightens out, the wrist joint, the hand goes back, the hip go back past the anatomical position, the knee joint straightens out, and the foot lifts. Now the way that I remember this is I imagine Cristiano Ronaldo, he just scored a goal, he runs off to celebrate, he throws everything back, his feet are coming up, his whole body is in extension. Next we have abduction and adduction. Now if aliens abduct you, they take you away and hopefully return you later. Abduction of the limb is basically the same thing. Abduction takes the limb away from the body and away from the midline. Adduction moves the limb in the opposite direction, adding it back to the body. So remember, ADDduction adds it back. Next we have medial and lateral rotation, and these relate to the spinning of the femur or the humerus in the joint. In the lower limb, medial rotation twists the foot inwards, a bit like someone desperate for a wee. Lateral rotation twists the foot outwards, as if they're doing a Charlie Chaplin walk. Now rotation in the upper limb is slightly harder to see, so I'd recommend to visualise it, you flex your elbow. If you then bring your fist inwards towards the middle of the body, that medial rotation and lateral rotation will take the fist outwards, away from the body. Then we move on to a special pair of movements that are only found in the upper limb, pronation and supination. Now I'm not able to demonstrate these using my anatomical figure, so I'll have to show you them myself. What I need you to do is hold your hands out like this, uh, sorry, the other way around, and there you go, that's it. You've just done pronation and supination. I did that fairly quickly, so I'll show you again. If you put your hands out like this, like you're holding a bowl of soup, your forearm is supine, and if you turn it round, we pronate it to turn the hand upside down and tip the soup on the floor. Now this movement changes the position of the hand, and people often think it's a movement of the wrist, but actually this occurs at the elbow. We do also have pronation and supination in the foot, but it's not active movement, so we tend not to talk about it too much. Finally, we have a special movement only found in the lower limb, and these are inversion and eversion of the ankle. Now I refer to these as the dog poo movement, but if you're walking down the street and trod in some dog nonsense, what do you do? You lift up your foot, you turn it in to look on one side of the sole, you turn it out to look on the other. And the movements you're using to do that are inversion and eversion. So when we turn the sole of the foot inwards, this is inversion. And when we turn the sole of the foot outwards, that's eversion. And that is it, the major movement for the upper and lower limb. Now, if you want to test yourself and try and apply them to some clinical scenarios, there should be a test below. But otherwise, hopefully see you again soon. Cheers.